Hello again, Saints. I want to thank everyone for joining us for another Romans chapter 13 survey. In Romans 13, this is lesson number 14. And we are looking at and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. And I understand we've been looking at the aspects of about the time and about why it is high time and things like that. In the other uh, couple studies before, we looked at the whole issue about reproof and correction. Well, that's reproof and correction, doctrine, reproof and correction, instruction and righteousness for ourselves. But we too are told, examine yourselves, prove yourselves. Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. And we're told that about we need to be reproved by the word of God, by the doctrine, by the word of God, reproving us that we walk not onto this world. But then I, uh, we also looked at the issue, what if our loved ones don't believe? What if, what, what, if, what if we're trying to live on to the Lord and serve him, but our loved ones, they themselves, decide, are desiring to do something else? And about the suffering that there is when that is the case. But in this study, we're going to be looking at the whole issue of that we ourselves ought to give unto our loved ones and even unto thy neighbor, as it says, therefore love... Um, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. That we ourselves, we ought to give reproof and correction and instruction, in, then instruction in righteousness, even unto, not just as an ambassador, but even unto our loved ones after, just say they're justified unto eternal life, but give them the doctrine. And we're going to be looking at that. And again, we're looking at Romans 13, and this is lesson 14. Lesson 14, and we are looking at, and that, well, knowing the time, it is high time to awake out of sleep and to give reproof and correction. Give the doctrine, give the reproof, give the correction unto them, even that, that our loved ones. And oftentimes we assume that that not saying anything, people are going to think we're crazy. They're going to, or they're just not going to get it anyway. We don't want the persecution because it, there is persecution that comes with the truth. Because what you're going to be saying is, I understand you love this doctrine of this world, but here's the doctrine of God the Father in godliness. This is how you want to walk because this is how I walk. Or, this is the doctrine that I am now going to walk in. So we giving them reproof and correction, folks, give, setting forth the doctrine unto even our loved ones or, or, or even the, un, the, the person you just see in the street. That it, there comes love. There comes selfless love and the selfless love on our part ought to be after godliness our lord and savior jesus christ didn't have to know anyone personally he did not have to know anyone by their first name where they went i don't say where they went to school but where they lived and all these other things but that every single person on this earth needs christ needs to needs his redemption you know and and, and many times i see people you know they go out and they do street preaching and things like that, you know, um, you, you, you know, there's, there's, there, there's good, there is good in that, you know, but in, in a sense, it's like if I go and I, I go in a crowd and I take hundreds of gospel tracks and I just throw them in the air, I mean, maybe there's a couple that might pick them up, I get that, but you know, just as you're speaking it out to people and they're just walking past and all they hear is um, our Lord and Savior and they just keep keep driving or they just keep walking. They hear a little bit. They're in their own conversation. But I, I understand the difficulty there is in sharing the gospel. Whether it's that way or it's see this person and you talk with them. But we ourselves ought to love the lost and love our loved ones far more than our own sakes and ought to love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Father himself 
more than our sakes. And it's we think it's love when we don't tell when we don't say anything. When we have people living right under our own roofs or we go we go places and and they're so keen to tell you how they live and their way of living and and, and, and tell you about uh, the behavior of man and this person he's a narcissist or he's this or he's that or he's she's that but we ourselves can't explain and give them the doctrine because we're afraid well they're just they're not going to know it or accept it folks we're going to look at the verses and it's going to tell you that you ought to give you ought to give it because by us not doing it we're actually saying we don't love them enough to give them truth we're withholding the truth of our lord and savior because for our sakes so we don't get the uh tribulation and the and the oh you're crazy or be looked down upon but when we step out there and take a stand when we stand therefore give the doctrine give the reproof then comes the correction then comes instruction of righteousness whether they get it or not would you rather look upon be looked upon like a fool in their sight or like a fool in your father's sight because you're wasting time. That's the point. And I'm going to say that again. Would you rather be looked upon, shamed, looked upon like a fool or be shamed in the face of, 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 of the world and our loved ones? Or would you rather be looked upon like a fool and, and be and be and, and, and have shame? Uh, in the sight of your father. Those things that Paul gave unto Timothy, what Paul said, uh, be not therefore ashamed, and then about don't have the spirit of fear. That wasn't just coming, that wasn't just coming from, from Paul. That was coming from direct revelation from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Father. The angel in front of the angelic realm, Timothy was shamed. He was looked upon as being ashamed of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and of our Father and the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. And that's the way he was looked upon. And what Timothy had to come to understand and what Paul was giving on to him was that you yourself need to understand that who would you rather be, be in whose sight do you want to be shamed between? You're going to be shamed in one or the other. Are you who do you want to who do you want to bear the shame? It ought to be us. We ought to bear that shame for our Lord and Savior. Because not only, it, it, and there, there, there's far more good than we think there is in it. Because of course it's going to make an impact in the hell, it impact in heavenly places. But it's also going to make an impact with them that do hear. With them that do understand the gospel and doctrine and believe. But not just only believe unto justification unto eternal life, but also to get them out of the doctrine of this world. Because the, because every single member of this world, a person in this world, is walking by the spirit of man. They're walking by the wisdom of man and the heart of man. I don't care if it's a little old lady you think done no wrong. Well, yeah, she's not physically able to do any more wrong. But it's the idea that even in, in her heart and mind, she has the spirit of man in, in her or him. And that they're walking according to this course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. They too need reproof and correction. But let's just move on now. Look at uh, Romans 13. Romans 13. And let's take a look at verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed and again folks when you're looking at this we ought to look at this and say and that now we know the time now we know that it, now it is high time and that high time is because it's so urgent and climactic because these times are perilous, because we're living in a crooked and perverse nation. But not only just us, 
our loved ones are living in a crooked and perverse nation. Our loved ones are, are living in perilous times. Our loved ones in this world are actually walking with the, the perilous times and they are also contributing to these perilous times. They, they themselves are taken captive in the night. They are walking in the night and they don't even have any light shining, shining before us. And they're looking for a way out, whether they know it, whether they know they should be or not. And we too are supposed to be those lights to give them lights as a lantern, to get them out of that and point them towards the day, folks. We ought to point them towards the day. And, and what is the light of the knowledge of the will of God? The armor of light is what we're supposed to be bearing. And if we're bearing the armor of light and you're walking in darkness, do you know what type of light you're going to shed forth? You're either going to have those that put their hand to their eyes like, oh, that's too bright for me. I'm, I'm going to walk back in the darkness. Oh, that's, that's just too much. That hurts my eyes. Or you're going to have some saying, hey, I want to shine as lights. Let's walk towards this person. And I know that analogy, folks, is what I'm just trying to put into perspective so we can understand about the time and how it is high time in the sleep that our, our loved ones could be sleep, folks. And, and, and oftentimes they are. Look at verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And that's a you to know far spent time. This night is far spent. The time of the night is far spent, folks. Verse, uh, look, look at Second Timothy again, verse three, verse one, uh, chapter three, verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come for men shall be lovers of them, their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And see, guess what? When you go to men and women of this world, whether you're, they're your loved ones or ones you don't even know their name, you're going to be despised. And this is what you need to get, uh, come get that understanding. You're going to be despised because you're going to be preaching Christ. You're going to be preaching Christ and you, and you know it. I, I don't you have to tell you this. You already know it. But that's not, that's perilous when a person is thinking and denying that, well, I just don't want to say it because I don't want the persecution. I don't want to live godly. But we must know that we are we're going to be looked upon as despised. Paul even said it. Second Corinthians, uh, first Corinthians, we are despised. And, and, and but and, well, second Corinthians also. But look at verse uh, four. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And, you know. That's why I said that we are, we know that we will be despised. We know that there's despising is going to come. You know, even back in the 1500s, 1700s, you, you had people take it, you had people, whether they were saved or not, they would take a stand for the their God that they believed in unto death. You had people getting burned at the stake. You had people... It, and I want to get into all the Reformation thing and, and, the, and, and why Martin Luther came. I don't want to get into all that. But when you look at even back in those times, people then would stand for truth. They didn't have to. They could have kept quiet. Nobody could, could spy out their liberty from Facebook or nothing like that. You know, they, they, but today, that's why there's so many different religions and men are running rapid because... Today, just certain doctrines like soul sleep, you know, yet people will get stoned for teaching a heresy, for teaching things, oh, there's no judgment seat, or oh, no, there's this or that. They, 
Now today we, we might get in a little disagreement and then we get so offended. Oh, he disagreed with me. And we, and we go and we take, we say, oh, I'm being persecuted. Persecution now versus persecution 2,000 years ago, folks. There is a whole different spectrum. You know, you being or we being looked upon and despised based upon giving the doctrine of godliness unto others. Us being despised is going to be, it's a given. It's going to be a given because we're, we're preaching that which is good. But we are supposed to love our loved ones and love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love the lost and love our Father just that much more than our own sakes. And so, as I said before, it's not just only saying, well, I'm going to go get people saved. I'm going to get people saved. Well, the reproof and correction unto the saved is the other aspect. Them that are walking and believing certain things that's, that's of an untruth, carnal doctrine, carnal minded things of this world, spirit of this world, but they're saved. Believe in God's intervening in people's lives and, and things like that. They need the reproof. And we ought not be afraid or ashamed to give it to them. Give them the verses. We got to give them the verses. Because it could be to the good, not only just for us, for um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but also for their sakes. That's why it says we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And not to please ourselves. Because pleasing ourselves would be, I don't want no conflict. I don't want no trouble. And then you don't have to have trouble. You just do your study. You just know what you know. Keep growing and throw it out there for those that will get it. If they don't, others don't get it, well, I'm not going to go disturb this guy. Look at what he's teaching. I'm not going to say anything. You, you, you could prob we could probably help. We could probably bear up his infirmity. Because they have infirmities. If they're preaching on truth, if they're saying our father's doing something that he is not doing today, there is infirmity in that. Okay? And we ought to bear it up. But let's move on now. Look at our Romans 12, Romans chapter 12. Knowing the time, folks, that now it is high time. But in order to serve as a living sacrifice, we must give reproof as a living sacrifice. We must give correction as a living sacrifice unto others, meaning what sacrifice they would go and they would be sacrificed for someone or others. They lay down their life for the, the uh, lay down their necks for another person's life. And that's what we'd be doing when we're giving them the truth. We are sacrificing what we might face for their spiritual life. A lot is at stake here, folks. There is heaven and there's hell. There's no purgatory in between. And we have to know <clears throat> the necessity is they could go one place or the other. Hopefully, it's hearing what our truth concerning the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God the Father's truth and live. Look at verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. You know, if, if your love simulated God's love, you would give the word. You would do what's well-pleasing. You would know that if you're simulating the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's life, you'll know he gave, he sacrificed, he didn't live unto himself, but for the other's sake of this world, they both uh, sacrificed themselves regardless of the 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 long suffering and what they faced, the hate that they faced. But we ourselves are, are told to abhor that which is evil. And we're going to look at godly hate in this survey, a study here. We're going to be looking at the godly hatred that we ought to have for this world and the spirit of this world and the spirit of man, which is in him. And I don't mean that we're to hate as in, in a sense of despising um transgender people or despising the abortion clinics or that that's that's not what you're to do not the people it's all the works of darkness and it is all part of of satan's plan of evil 
but at the top of Satan's plan of evil is bad doctrine. But look at um, Cleave to that, which is good. Look at verse 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. That's five aspects of selfless love, regardless what the persecution is, folks. Because we think that being kindly affectionate with brotherly love in, in honor, preferring one another is not saying anything. If we have people, just say people are over for family get together and then, you know, you're not saying anything. You're just, you want to say something and you're going along with the flow. But then you get one family member step up and say, I like to, uh, let, let's come together and pray. And, 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 and you know, they don't know any truth. But they're taking a stand. They're they're coming up and, and and telling you what they think they know. And each each and every person will have their own mindset of their own wisdom to give on to others for their good. Anytime someone's telling you about politics, sports, current affairs, they are trying to educate you in the wisdom of this world that they just found out about. They just been edified and now they want to come edify you for your infirmities to your good. So you can go out and and you can run and tell. Now you can operate upon what you just learned from this teacher. And that's why we have to look at it in that sense, folks. They're trying to educate us. And I don't just mean our loved ones. I'm not saying look out for your loved ones. <laughs> When the, when the Lord said, I'm come to set variance between, he said, man's foes shall be them of his own household. But what he meant by that is if you're on my side, the Lord is saying, you're going to have others standing on the side of this world because they're not going to know it. They cannot discern the, the spirit of God. It's foolishness unto them. Look at, uh, look at verse 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, in spirit, serving the Lord. That's not slothful in the Lord's business, folks. Not your own, not your own going to work and being a sluggard or no, no. That's concerning the Lord's business. Look at uh first Tim uh, Thessalonians now. First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five, look at verse twenty one. And we're going to come back here if we have time, because I want to take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Again, I would love to have went all the way through the whole chapter. Prove all, uh, verse 21, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. See, you know, when you think about it, think about why were the Thessalonians so faithful? Why were they so faithful and they even saw their own countrymen killed because of the persecution of uh, for preaching Christ. But they 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 abounded yet more and more in love. Their love wasn't because they were just fellowshipping together, because they were having Bible conferences and fellowshipping together and going to local assembly and saying hi to everybody. And uh, that's not what they were doing. They were from. It sounded out from among them the word of God because what all you got to do, and that's why I said it would be befitting for any and every person watching this, go back and read 1 Thessalonians and think to yourself before you read it, why were they so faithful? What was their motivation, so to speak? And when you look at it in verse 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5, Remember, verse three, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in the, in the sight of, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. And the issue there is they knew what was good and they knew what was evil. And you see this here. The Thessalonians didn't need the Romans epistle to be able to be established in sound doctrine. They were already given the doctrine, which we find in the book of Romans. This is saying the same thing. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. 
an appearance of evil. See, folks, I know e what evil looks like. I'm able to discern it. I'm able to discern the good and hold fast onto that. I'm not saying it's going to happen every single 24 hours out the day. That's why you're told to prove all things. Verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray your whole God, I pray God, your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be preserved blameless until our coming of the, unto the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See, being blameless, walking in the doctrine of blameless is and, and perfection is you walking according to the word of God. And see, folks, the rapture could ha could happen in the next 10 minutes or 10 seconds or 10 hours or 10 years. But at the rate this the world is going, how perilous it is. You know, we every every 20 years someone will say, it couldn't get no worse than this. It couldn't get no worse than that. Well, you're supposed to set your gauge by what we looked at in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Folks, it's getting so bad. As I said before, you you have people, I don't care where you go, everyone is lovers of their own selves. Everyone. You, you get, and as I said before, whether you go, you go to just any place to order something or whatever, call someone for service, you're going to get bad service because people are lovers of their own selves. They're so quick to defend themselves. They're so quick to, they can't put off their life and the way they live when they put on a uniform of someone else. Just our loved ones, so quick to write us off, so quick to turn their backs. But guess what? You're told to preach him. Be not ashamed, therefore. And I understand he was telling that to Timothy, but he's talking to me and you as well, as ones that's going to be giving the doctrine unto others, giving truth unto them. But abhorring that which is evil, cleaving to that which is good, we have to know what the good of God really is. As I said before, trying to show distinctions of what is truth and what's not truth. Yeah, what people say, that Christian saying, what the evil is, what the good is, is one presidential candidate is saved by a bullet. He, he he turned his head. God didn't make things go for on his sake, but a man get killed at the rally. The evil is not when people say, "Oh, you see the Olympics and they had they had transgender guys up there acting like the depicting the Lord's Supper with the Lord and all that." Well, sure, that's there. There is an element to evil there, folks, but they're not teaching anyone. There's that's. The, the far more evil, as I said, I, I'm doing this study here on Sunday, and there are far more, there are billions of evil going on in this world that's far more evil than than transgender pe guys up there acting like they're the, the, the apostles in Christ. Again, they're acting as such. They're not teaching bad doctrine. They're not teaching you that that's the good. And that's what someone said. Well, look, they're they're passing off the good. Even if it was men that were, just say, married, and they were acting like they were Christ right before the, Olymp uh, the Olympics got started. That's, that we think that's better, that that's good. Having people depict themselves as the, the 12 apostles in Christ, there, there's no good in that. And it doesn't matter if it was all women or gay men or whether it was just men that were, they were all married and, and they weren't, again, folks, there is no good or evil in that. That's just the spirit of this world. And you got to look right through that stuff. What's evil is you, you got, you got, you got, you got within a mile from where I live, there are hundreds of churches just in within a 10 mile radius, hundreds of churches, so-called, and, and preach, teaching Hundreds of people as we speak. That's where your evil is. That's where your that's where the fight is at. Because we got our loved ones falling for that stuff. And we have to we have to give them the reproof and correction, folks. If we love them enough, if we love our Lord and Savior enough, if we love our Father enough, for not be not ashamed of the doctrine of the 
Holy Ghost. But let's move on now. Come over to Colossians 1. Colossians 1, look at verse 8. Colossians 1, verse 8. Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. But notice he says here, who also uh, declared unto us your love in the spirit. See, your love in the living word of God, that's just not your love in this world or your love in, in sports, but your love in the living word, the living God. As you yourself walk in it, you walk with selflessness. And if you're doing that unto all, all, unto all pleasing, you're going to give people the doctrine. You're not going to be ashamed. But look, look at um, look at uh, verse nine again. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And, but notice that they're already loved. They have love in the spirit. And Paul's desiring that they might be filled, filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Well, see, this is what I mean when we talk, look at the word, we look at blameless, we look at doctrine of perfection. The doctrine of perfection and blamelessness is continually walking in the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. As I said, folks, it doesn't happen at one time. It's not that you're perfect and that's it. Or well, you gotta reach a certain level you got to reach a certain level of perfectness, you know, and that, that's not what this is about. It's a constantly, remember what Paul told the Thessalonians, that ye may abound yet more and more. Each day, folks, is a perfecting doctrine. It's a hope, it's a blameless doctrine. It's unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And that's increasing. That's a constant increasing onto a, notice it says every good work. You know, until the day we leave this earth, folks, is when we are going to stop walking in this, okay? But, and also that's not being ashamed, but preaching him. That is what's well-pleasing unto him is us not being ashamed of his doctrine, of his word, of his life. And uh, look, look at verse 11 now. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now this strengthen with all might, that strengthen with all the living word of God, that strengthen with all wisdom, as verse nine says, all spiritual understanding filled with filled with okay and that's that that being strengthened folks is the constant strengthening by his word with all might according to the his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the father verse 12 giving thanks unto the father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, notice light, but you notice it says, hath made us meet to be partakers. And that's why, we, that's why he said giving thanks. We ought to be given thanks because we are a, we are entrusted with the doctrine. We're entrusted with the ministry. We're entrusted with the faith and we're being entrusted with the faith to that we can, can give it on to others and that we can, we can have them walk in the light. Because as I made mention of the analogy about you having you having on the armor of light and you're and you're in darkness, you can be seen from hundreds of miles. If in, if you're in darkness and it's hundreds of miles, someone can bear light, bear witness to that light, and others might come and others might others might be attracted unto it, so to speak. <clears throat> That's why Paul told those uh, Corinthians. Ye know the household of Stephanus, how that they have addicted themselves unto the ministry, that ye submit yourselves unto such, because they have the light. They have the light of the knowledge of the will of God. Look at verse 13. Who hath delivered, notice this, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness 
and hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son and that delivered us from the power of darkness is being partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light and see people look upon that when they say well yeah that's talking about justification unto eternal life justification unto eternal life is what that's talking about well you guys think like this uh, yeah we, we know that there's justification unto eternal life delivered out of adam into into um into christ but this is also going after satan's power that we that he has this world unto that this world is taken captive by him at his will and that we have been translated and it's by his word both aspects of that is by the word of god folks and we ourselves need to we need to speak the word of god unto others that others themselves that they that they themselves may may be able to give it unto others that we can help them get them out of a snare and i'm even talking about pastors that write you to buy the word of truth even themselves can are, are, are falling many have fallen victim to this world you see them they're, they're teaching the same same things over and over that they're they're not increasing in the knowledge that they're, they're not being strengthened uh, 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 by might, by his will, unto all will please. They're not uh, all, as we just looked at, uh, all spiritual understanding, unto all wisdom. It's a it's a constant growing daily, every single day. And if they haven't learned, if they haven't grown in the past one year or six months, folks, it's, it, there's, they're not walking in the doctrine which is according to perfection. Because the doctrine, which is according to affection, uh, 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 um, uh, perfection, the doctrine, which is according to blameless, being blameless, would have the saints being addicted to the ministry and have them have their affection be be, be onto this, uh, onto the word of God there and on, onto the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But let's move on now for time's sake. Come over to Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six, and let's take a look at verse one, uh, 11. Yeah, let's take a look at verse 11, because I would love to go through the whole ch uh, verse here, uh, chapter here. But look at verse 11. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is opened unto you. Our heart is enlarged. And notice this. Our mouth is opened unto you. Our heart is enlarged. Paul is saying, I want to, we want to give you the doctrine. We are here to receive you. We're here to receive you, as, as uh, Romans 14 talks about. It says, him that is weak in the faith, receive ye. But and look at, he says, our heart is enlarged. Our heart, Paul's heart's enlarged. He's saying, our mouth is, we're ready to give you the gospel. We're out of selfless love. We don't have any of this world's lust in our hearts, any of this world's system and this world's um, uh, spirit in our hearts. We have our Father's heart. We're constantly learning. It's enlarged so we can make room for more of God's word, for more godliness, is what Paul is saying here. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. And when Paul, if someone's speaking unto the children, they're going to be giving their children their selfless love, and Paul's using here the ones that we could, we, we uh, the one we could give up of ourselves and be a living sacrifice for. That's our children, and Paul tells them, "I'm giving it to you." And this is what we need to do with our loved ones, folks. We need to explain to them, uh, "Well, look, I love the, I, I love you. That's why I'm saying this. Even not just not just our loved ones, ones we don't know." I love you. That's why I'm giving you this. I am doing what I'm doing because not my sake, but for your sake and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's sake. And Paul wants us to know. He wants us to know and understand. As I said, just as a father, or just as a parent, as they are giving unto their children selfless love, they're giving up of themselves and they want them to know what how their heart is and that as he says i speak as unto my children be ye 
also enlarged. He wants to understand that as a father and mother lay up for their children in selflessness and they desire that, that I'm giving you something that, that you can benefit by, that you too can be, can also as a father and or a mother can teach their children. This is something that you ought not to, uh, to abandon. That, that you ought to cleave onto that is good. It's good for you. And it ought to be good for your children. And, and, and I know some people say, you're making too much out of it. No, that's why Paul says, I speak as unto my children. This is good doctrine. And it is good for you as well. Now look at verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness we tell our children that too we tell our children the same thing we'll say don't go out there don't go out there and be this way because you know what you know what happened to those that walk that way they're going to go to jail you could end up dead you you, you could end up uh, uh getting bad credit we we lay out there for our children the, the example of why they shouldn't have fellowship with this world. Why they shouldn't be, be in communion with the gang violence and, the, and all these different things we, we give unto our children. And why would you want to have fellowship with those people? Why would you want to have communion? Don't go hang with the bad crowd. And look at what he says in verse 15. When, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? He lets you know. Christ is not going to be with Belial, the devil. He, they have no concord. They're, they're, it's, they're not one. It's not good. What part hath the, he that believeth with the infidel? Why would he? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said. I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You notice that your body is the temple of God? Your body is not meant to for the spirit of man to be within your inner man nor is nor is your loved one's body meant to be for the spirit of man to be in those that you love nor is the ones the unsaved they should not have within them uh, a pathway to hell nor should they have the spirit of man with which is in them you can help their infirmities if you look upon it that it is high time that not only we wake out of sleep, but they wake out of sleep also if we love them with an enlarged heart. Look at verse, look at verse, um, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Notice this, wherefore come out from among them saved people. I know this doesn't say that, but He's talking to justified individuals here. He's talking to the Corinthians who were divided. He's talking to the Corinthians who were who were uh, of this person and of that person. They were babes. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I And I will be a father unto you, and you should be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. But you notice... The Lord can't receive us unto sonship. He can't receive us unto our adoption unless we come out from among this world. Unless we be no more conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Then he can receive us. And someone said, wait a minute, you're reading into it. You got two different verses. It's the same context. Romans chapter 12 explains about being a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is the will of God that we be no more children tossed to and fro. It is the will of God that not only just we be no more children, that our loved ones be no more children tossed to and fro. It is also the Father's will that not only just we be transformed by the renewing of our minds 
there be no more conformed to this world, but our loved ones and even the lost be no more children and be no more conformed to this world and also be transformed by the renewing of their minds. Folks, we know those who are watching. We know that it is in our hands by the word of God, us presenting the word of God unto them, giving them the doctrine, reproof and correction, and then instruction in righteousness. And it might cause some pain, folks. It might cause pain. But the idea is that it's our, we are to bear the infirmities of the weak. And we're to look upon them as the weaker brethren or even those that are in Adam needing us to give them love. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. We give them the, the word of God. And, and also, and after that, be there to give them more and give them more. I have people all the time reaching out to me. And guess what? I'm not going to be one that's going to shun them and say, well, I need to go do this. I'm, uh, you know, I work 16 hours. Or I work seven days a week. Folks, there is always time to give, give unto them that need it. And if you, and I'm going to say this to, to anyone watching now, if you have a pastor you look up to, you have a brother who's, oh, he's, he's pastor so-and-so. But you, but but you send him a you send him a question and he can't you don't have the time to give you something to, to to answer your question, but you see him and his wife they're going on trips, him and his wife they're doing this, oh he's doing that he's over here doing this, and someone say well no he has tens of thousands of brethren who ask him questions, well he should be able to answer one, or two or three, I got brethren all the time we we talk all the time. Even those that know that they always there are the ones that text me or call me, you know, things like that. You know, um, they know I am there for them and I'm there for anyone that has any Bible question, any Bible comment. I, I, I would definitely respond. But let's just move on. <sighs> Look at Revelation chapter two. We're not going to spend too much time on this. What we're going to look at here is that we, too. We ought to have a godly hatred and abhorrence for this world. Godly hatred and godly abhorrence for the things of this world. And know the way our Father views it is evil. We're just going to, we're not going to, as I said, we're going to spend a couple of minutes on this. Look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Now, that's my intention in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Look at verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first. Notice this love thou hast left thy first love and here if you know the context of what's going on here what's being spoken of you know he's, he's speaking unto those that saints but in the first love what it ought to be remember therefore what from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Notice, they could. And the idea, once thou fallen, thou hast left thy first love. What well, does that mean they're not saved? Of course, they're still saved. It's justified, still justified unto eternal life. But this talks about sanctification unto holiness. Look at verse 6. But this thou hast... But thou hatest, thou, that thou hatest, the deeds of the Nicol Nicolaitans, which I also hate. What's being shown here is that godly hatred for the deeds of what's called, the they that are called the Nicolaitans. Preachers of bad doctrine. And they're Nicolaitans. That is someone, uh, uh, um, they, these are people of a person, a Nicola, uh, um, I'm going to say a Nicolaitan himself, but let's just, that that's a whole different study, but it's the deeds of, and, and it's the works of these people and which he also hates. Now look at verse 13. I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. Uh, and, and holdest fast my name 
and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas, which, I mean, was my faithful mar martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, to commit fornication. Do you see what this is here? This is doctrine. It's bad doctrine. The Lord hates bad doctrine. We ought to hate bad doctrine also. These are people saying, this is godliness. Look at verse 15. So thou hast also so hast thou also them that hold the what? Doctrine. See that there? Doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Before it said deeds. Doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight. Notice, fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now, you notice their fight against them. It shows you who's going to be fighting against the doctrine. Them that hold, they have doctrine. He even goes back to ba Balak and Balaam, which taught bad doctrine. The ones that, it's, it's bad doctrine, folks, is what he hates. That's where the evil, that's where the night is. That's what's, what it's entailed in the night. Satan's darkness is preaching truth, transformed into an angel of light to deceive. And God hates that. And we have our loved ones. We have them of this world, folks. They are walking in that darkness. They are being taught of this world. They are being taught of Satan's night. They also incorporate a doctrine about themselves. But you notice the godly hatred and the abhorrence for bad doctrine People that have Bible in hand and they say, yeah, God said they're, they're teaching, they teach among us folks, but our, but they can be, our family members can fall victim and our loved ones are, are the, the, the unsaved, they fall victim to it, but they need our help. They need the reproof. They need doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. But what if they're going to tell me this? What if they're going to say, I don't want to hear that. As I said in the last study. Give them a verse at a time. Give them a little bit. Give them what they can ingest. Give them a little here. Give them one minute here. Let it go. Next time, give them another. But if you know you can't, you're not going to be able to just say you're at a gathering and you know, oh, I'm not going to be able to talk to this person. This is my only chance, my only opportunity. This is my only shot. Well, shoot that shot, so to speak. Give them what they'll hear. Let it go walk away, go somewhere else, come back to him in another hour. We have to use subtlety to the simple. But let's move on now. Go over to Psalms. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. I am uh, verse 100. I'll give you a chance to get there. <laughs> 100, verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Hmm. Because I keep thy precepts, thy words. And we too, folks. And I'm not even going to have to go through the old issue of how we can use this. I understand our dispensation. I get that. But what you see a saint doing here, his understanding is far better than those before him because he, he keeps the word. We too ought to keep the word. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Is this applicable today? Well, it sure is. Well, we know who this is talking to, but this is a saint relying upon the word of God, leaning upon his understanding, not leaning on our own understanding or the understanding of the words of others. Look at verse uh, two uh, of 102. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, folks, today, in this dispensation of the Gentile grace that we live in, if we look upon God's word as sweet unto our taste, 
if we look upon it sweeter to honey to our mouth, if we value it in this, in this aspect, the principles of this, they're good unto us. It is <clears throat> for our learning. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works in this dispensation. Verse 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Guess what? Saying that there's no judgment seat of Christ is a false way. Saying that there's soul sleep is a false way. That's not God's way. That's man's way. Man came up with that. It, false ways God hates. Look at verse one. Look at uh, verse 162. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. That's how we too in this dispensation ought to rejoice at God's word as its treasures. And, and Paul even said we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We ought to view what we have in our earthen vessels over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We ought to view it as hid treasures. Great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. We too ought to hate and abhor the lying of man today. And what I mean by the lying of man is man giving us, giving bad doctrine. What, what people are operating upon, they're operating upon the power of the air. That's the words of man. That's, that's not truth. It's lying. Even them who rightly divide the word of truth. They, they can walk in a, they, they can walk in a belief system that they believeth, but they're as the carnal. They can even be weaker brethren. They run out and teach before the time, before the time that they are able to be able to teach others. They can be a novice and they can fall into temptation. They can fall into the snare of the devil because they're a novice. We see that over in, in, in both places where it teaches about a bishop and a deacon and their wives. But you know what? For time's sake, folks, we're just going to get right into more verses because we have a lot yet still to cover. But let's move on. Come over now to Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. Look at verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Paul is saying, preach them. Notice this walk in wisdom to them that are without. What I just made mention, and we're looking at through this whole video here, doctrine, reproof, and correction. They're only That's only going to go to them that are without. They're the ones that need the doctrine, reproof, and correction because they're without wisdom. We have to walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. That means redeem the time that you have. Go get it. Redeem it more. Redeem it and redeem it again. Keep redeeming as if, you know, when you redeem coupons, you don't want them to go, go bad because of the business time frame on them. There's benefit. Redeem, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Let your speech all be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And, and that's the way it is, folks. I mean, just in the past hour, I've done that. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta know how to talk. You got to know how to give it to them. You got to know even those we love or we must speak and not be silent. Someone saying something, oh, have a blessed day. Oh, I believe God's doing this or God is not doing that. You got to know how to answer. You ought to know how to answer. If you don't, always let your speech be seasoned with grace, always with grace, seasoned with salt. And that's by putting your nose in the book. That's how you, you're going to know how to answer every man. God's not going to give you the tongue of, a tongue of wisdom. Just, oh, I don't, I don't know what to say. Lord, give me something. That's not how it works. Come on, look at the Proverbs now. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. You know, a lot of people don't like me going over to the Proverbs for doctrine, reproof, and correction, even though Paul does it himself. Look at um, verse 4, Proverbs 6, verse 4. 
give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roll from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. But notice, give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. In other words, this saint is going to be always awake, always awakened unto the words, uh, uh, understanding, craving for good doctrine. Look at verse 6. Go to the ant, thou slugger, consider her ways and be wise. Which have no having no guile, or overseer or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O slugger? When wilt thou rise out of sleep? Now, as you see here, the analogy of an ant, and how an ant laborist laborist during the times when others are out having a party and doing their thing and whatever you want to do, living unto this world. But the, the ant, he's, go to the ant. Look at that instruction. L labor. Don't sleep. Now look at uh, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. I know I, I just, we should have dealt with this when we were in Colossians. It would have been a lot quicker. You just turn right over. But look at Ephesians 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awaketh thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, but wise. See, even in this here, we have to tell our loved ones that they ought not sleep, that they ought not, that they're that that they ought to rise from the dead, and Christ will give them light. But we have to be the example light, folks, unto them. We are we're privileged to be speaking on the behalf of Christ. You're being beseeched to be God's living sacrifice. You're being beseeched to be wise in having the mind of Christ. You can be wise, but see, so what we think a lot of times, when it says, see ye in that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, we think it's wise if we don't say anything. We think we'll be counted as a fool if we said something. But look at verse 16. We have to redeem the time, folks. Redeeming the time, why? Because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And you see that we can understand what the will of the Lord is. We can understand, have all spiritual understanding, as that said. Well, the other verses said, with wisdom and all spiritual understanding. We can understand what the will of the Lord is. So can our loved ones. So can the ones out there that we pass by every day. They can understand that. The lost can understand if it, it the ball is in our court, so to speak, folks. We too ought to declare unto the world about Satan's night. And every day ought to be high time for us. Every day ought to be and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. There's no slumber time. There's no no time that, as the uh, the Proverbs talked about the ant, and it says, oh sluggard, go look at the ant. Go take a look at the ant. Look how it's laborious. It doesn't have any ruler. It doesn't have any, any um, uh, overseer. But we do. Our father whom we serve. So you think he's only good enough for us, so to speak? You think, well, I got it. I'm on my way to heavenly places. Yeah, I should give them the truth, but they're just going to reject it. They're just going to, we have all these type of things that we, we come up with because we're ashamed. There's two reasons we're ashamed or we desire, we're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Only two options there. That's the only two options he gave unto Timothy. You're either ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ or, as he told him later on, that people being lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And the pleasures can also be that, well, I don't want the, the ridicule. I'm going to go in with the in crowd. I'm saved. Maybe they might ask me a question one day. Maybe, maybe the group of people might ask me something. You know, you, you got past Bible... Got pastors. 
You see them, they, they, they post on their page, them at the club, them at um, fraternities, you know, uh, and things like that. Um, just many things. But folks, I, I'm, it's not me judging. It's me bringing forth that we ought to understand it is high time. It's no time to be out in this night, just running around with our eyes closed. But let's move on now. Come over now to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, look at verse 11. But thou, O man of God, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Now, in all this, I want you to take a look at this. Now, we know we ought to follow after these things. But in the midst of this, the man of God is all supposed to be proclaiming justification unto eternal life and sanctification unto holiness to the lost and to the others. That's what's being, being shown. Verse 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has notice this has professed the good profession before many witnesses see we ought to profess a good profession we ought to we're called on to that laying hold on the eternal life folks is redeeming the time and as you saw before redeeming the time and and that's what this is and, and we ought to know that the time is short what if the rapture was to come the first thing, we would have a lot of sorrow, folks, because we would say to ourselves, what about my loved ones that I didn't say anything to? What about all those people that walked past me that were lost? All the people at my job that more than likely are unsaved? But look at uh, 1 Thessalonians now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to deal with this um, probably... Yeah, we'll just finish out with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, yeah, look at verse five, 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that ye, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Notice he says ye are not. He's talking about, he know. remember, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, he explained just how faithful they were. And they were abounding yet more and more. And he desired that they abound yet more and more. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Hey, why? Because they're able to discern. There's, they have enough spiritual doctrine within them. Even though Paul hadn't written many epistles, he established them. Look at verse five, uh, 5. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, in view of that, therefore, let us, and you folks, I'm going to deal with this. When we go looking at the works of darkness, I'll deal with this because this is dealing with the works, Satan's darkness. There's works in his darkness, but in his darkness, he also has workers and children in his darkness. So we'll get to that when we get there. So I'm not going to even deal with that right now. <laughs> the, uh, therefore, let us not sleep as do others but let us notice this watch and be sober us watching folks is us being awake us being on watch for this evil world but not just only for our sake but for our loved one's sake therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night they that be drunken are drunken in the night and notice that they, there's people can be drunken in the night. And that's, that's not talking about alcohol drunk. That's talking and, and, and counting sheep sleep. This is talking about a different type of sleep and a different type of drunken. It's being under the influence, being, you're talking about ones being sober and others that are under the influence of this world. Verse eight, but let us who are of the day be sober. Notice the word sober now. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet of hope and salvation. Wait a minute. A breastplate? Isn't that armor? 
or sure is. Let us who are of the day be sober, put it on the breastplate of faith, love, and for a helmet of salvation. Isn't that right there Ephesians 6 doctrine? It sure is. Isn't it also Romans 13 doctrine? It is. It talking about put on the armor of light and, and all those things. That's, yeah, right there in 1 Corinthians, First Thessalonians. But we're going to go back to that in a second because I, uh, I think we uh, get ready to close in a minute. But in looking at that, folks, what you see take place, you see doctrine being given unto us and as it was unto the Thessalonians. They knew they were being lights from out. Out from you sounded, as he, as Paul says, the word of God unto all they that believe in all across the world, their faithfulness. But as their faithfulness was sounded out, it was being taught unto others. They looked, the household, the house of Achia, the Achia saints looked over there at those Thessalonians like, look at those guys. And, 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 and that, and that, uh, had an effect on them. They they were um, they they benefited from that ministry, from their their faithfulness. And, and folks, we too need to be an example unto the ones we love, and even unto those at our job, those that are amongst us, our neighbors, those that are walking in the street, things like that. And someone, you, you you can, the way I deal with the unsaved as an ambassador is different from someone else. You know, for me, I, 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 I like to deal one-on-one. -on -one. I can reach people far better. I go, I give a, um, give, give a booklet that I've done. I'll hand them one of my booklets and say, hey, you know, I like to, you know, give, give them something that is, that, that, that can benefit them. But I, but I know as I, that's an open door, free of charge, and explain to them what's in the booklet. Justification unto eternal life, sanctification unto holiness, our life that now is as being sons and daughters unto him and growing in, in him, in, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding of his will. And uh, the, our hope that we have, whether it be by rapture or in heavenly places in the life that we we'll live with him in heavenly places. But again, as I said, it, there, there, there's many ways. There's subtlety unto the simple, subtlety unto the, even the unsaved. But let's move on now, continuing of uh, chapter 5 here in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. Look at verse 9. For God hath not appointed us, on, us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And that salvation there, that salvation is twofold. You notice in verse 8, it had made mention about breastplate of faith, love for helmet of hope of, of salvation. He had just got through talking about sleeping and the night and darkness and children of darkness and all these things like that. Now he's talking about you can get salvation from that darkness. The darkness of Satan's knife, there is salvation from that. And if it comes by rapture, then that then that's the case. But we ourselves can have salvation from that. And, and we'll get to that later. But um, look at verse 10. Well, not later in the study here, but at a later time. Who died for us that whether we be wake, whether we wake or sleep, we shall we should live together with him. Notice wake or sleep. You're going to live with him regardless. Whether you sleep in the Lord, meaning whether you die, you're going to be you're going to be um, immediately with Him. You're going to live. You're going to live regardless, one way or the other, whether we're in the land of the living or whether we we leave this body and go go to heavenly places. There's no soul sleep. Uh, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, notice this here, folks. Comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. Notice they're already doing it. Why would he need to tell them if they're already doing it? Because he wants them to continue in this goodness. He wants them to continue walking that way. 
but comforting ourselves together, edify one another? Where does it leave any room to be quiet? If a person's edifying, don't he have to give reproof to someone? Don't he have to change the way of thinking by the doctrine? Well, of course he does. Don't, his, don't he have to give him the, the correction by the doctrine? Of course he does. But in love. Look at verse 14 now. Come down to verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Now, that's in doctrine, folks. Warning them. Paul's exhorting them that they warn them that are unruly. Now, you take an unruly person, you go warn them. Well, how, you think they're going to say, okay, brother, you're right. I'm, I'm, you're right. I am being unruly. Maybe back then, yeah. But we know what can come out of that. But you're to warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient to all men. See that none render evil for evil unto man, any man, but be ever... But be ever, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to and to all men. Now you notice again, as I said before, a lot of this doctrine is over there in, in Romans chapter 12. A lot of this is Romans chapter 12 doctrine. And Paul didn't have to write the book of Romans yet for them to for them for God to teach it unto them. Those saints had. All things that Paul taught from Romans through Philemon, they were also taught unto them. That's that, 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 that shows the genius in God's word, how God does things like that. How God is, it, it, the, the, the saints that lived, uh, or maybe a year, the Thessalonian saints or the Galatian saints, they, if they could ingest it, they could have gotten all knowledge and wisdom. As some, as you see, they were operating upon that. But I'm going to say this here, folks, and then we'll get ready to close. Uh, we, too, have to give that exhortation, that correction, and that reproof to our loved ones so that they might know the good. They might know the evil in God's sight and the good in God's sight. That they might know as sons that, that know it is high time. And they, too, can teach other saints that it is high time. That it is high time and every day ought to be high time. And they too can be as our father's lights with the armor, the, the, the armor. As it says, put ye on and talk about put ye, put on the armor of light. They too would love to, to, to adorn the light of the knowledge of the will of God. And, and, and whether they see it or not, we, we know ourselves, folks, how fervent, fervent we were and still should be when we saw truth we couldn't wait to go tell it to someone else and those same people they can't wait to go tell people their heart what they just learned they're scrolling right now on instagram uh, uh snapchat everywhere else and they can't wait to run and tell somebody something whether it's a, a two cute kittens playing with each other they can't wait to show it and send it to somebody else can't wait to spark up the spirit of laughter on someone or hey guess what what and, and they can't wait to tell folks we too are ought to we, we we have to reprove we have to give it to them whether they want to hear it or not find subtlety give it to give them the doctrine give them give them the doctrine that we can and then they can accept hopefully the reproof and then they can accept the correction, the, the the correct way now. Reproof is, well, no, God's not, I'm sorry to tell you this, uh, uh, God's not dealing in that way today. That's not how God's love is shown today. But then now give him the correction, give him the correction in how he is working. What, how the word of, what the word of God says now. And then instruction in righteousness. Hopefully that that's the case. But folks, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Till next time, thank you.